Hey guys, this is going to be another quick Linux command video. Check the link in the description for more info and for copy and paste examples. The Linux LN command creates links. So these will either be hard links or soft links. Soft links are also commonly called symbolic links or just sim links for short. So a hard link is basic, basically um, just another name for the same data on your disk. So um, every file on a disk is basically a name that points to some data. Now that, that name will be the file name. Now for a hard link, you're just creating a second name that refers to the same data, whereas with a soft link, you are creating a, ba a soft link basically points to another file name, which then points to the data. So in any case, we I have some more background on that in another video that I've already done. So you can go check out those concepts in that video. I'm going to try to put the link to that in the description. But um, in this guide, we're just going to go over um, using the command. So um, to create a link, you, to create a hard link, you can just use the ln command like this. You can say if you have a file in here called test1, you can say ln test1.txt link1. Dot txt. We'll just call it that. We could call it whatever we want. And if you look here, they both look like regular files and they both have the same data in them and they both point to the same data on the disk. If you delete either one of them, the, file, the data will still remain. In, it, basically, the file remains until you delete both of those. So um, you could also, you know, you could name it whatever you want. You can create another link like this. Just call it link one. You have uh, three hard links now. And you can actually also just say ln, like like this. This is actually not going to work unless it's in a different directory. We'll, we'll, we'll cover that. It's the same syntax. Um, you can actually just specify it with a single argument if that's in a, in a parent directory. But we'll show you that with the sim links. You can do that with sim or hard links. But all right, next step, creating a sim link, ln-s, um, test1.txt. Let, let's just call it um, link two.txt, right, and say ls-l, there we go, there is our sim link. Now you see here, link, these are all basically the same file. Well, link one, link, you know, and link one.txt are but basically um, file names that point to the same data on disk as test one.txt does. However, link two is a sim link that we just created. We used the dash s for sim link. So link two, this, this link here, points to the name test1.txt, which then points to the data on disk. Now, you could, if you remove, um, I'm going to, I'm going to cover, you know, I'll, let's, let's just do this now. You can, um, rm test1.txt, and now we're going to have a broken link. So see how that's highlighted in red? If your shell has, uh, um, colors enabled, you, you'll be able to see that, but, um, yeah, that's a broken link now. So any case, moving along here. So you can create, uh, let, let's create a relative link. You, you, you could say, um, let, let's recreate this file before we do that. So there we go. We've recreated that file. Now you, you can say, ln s dot 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 go back say home user one test one test one dot txt and call it link one so this will create a relative link so if you look at this relative link it shows you dot 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 and uh, you know the whole path here now, depending on what directory you're in, that will point to something different, right? So let's say I make a subdirectory like this, sub1, and move link into sub1. That This won't be valid anymore. So let's go to sub1 and look at that link there. Now it's broken because you actually have to go back more directories to, uh, you know, to, to reach this file. So in any case, let's create an absolute link. So you can say ln-s, home, user1, one, test1, one, test1, one, dot txt, link2. Let's call it link2. And notice when you look at it, 
link two points to the to the absolute path here, right? So let's say if we move link two to sub one to, to this directory here, right? Now let's go in there and let's just take a look at it. Now notice link two is not broken because link two points to this absolute path and it always points to that exact absolute path no matter what. Whereas using a relative path, it's relative to your current directory. So you change your current directory that the link is in and suddenly it's broken. So that's one important distinction between using an absolute path and a relative path. So you know your source can be a, a, a relative path or an absolute path. So um, yeah, something to pay attention to. So let's see, what else do we want to cover here? So create a relatively, create an absolute. We've done both of those. Um, but let's just create some more just, just to do it. So ln dash s dot 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 Etsy hosts link three. All right, so from here, we, we have a link to our Etsy hosts file. It's a relative link. Now let's do the same thing. But uh, let's just make it an absolute. I, I, I'm kind of, this is kind of a little bit repetitive. I'm going to show you some more useful stuff here too, though. Um, but yeah, you can, you can make this an absolute link like that. So there we go. So relative link, absolute. So um, let, let's, uh, let, let's, I'm going to show you another way to create a broken link, ln dash s. All right, doesn't doesn't exist dot txt new link dot txt so you have your source we're trying to create a link to this file and the link is going to be named this hit enter and you'll see that it is broken because that file doesn't exist so yeah that that's an example of a broken link now you could also say ln dash s dot dot etsy hosts now this does not go back enough directories so that is going to create yeah an, another um wait, wait what did i okay so hosts right here that creates another broken link now notice instead of um instead of saying um you know specifying the link name i only specified the source now you can do that if it's in a separate directory so if you specify, normally when you create a link, say ln-s, you'd put source here, the file you want to link to, and then the name of the link. Now if you do that, if you're linking to a file in the same directory, um, basically, uh, so if you, if you remove the name of the link, by default, the, your, your target link, your, the name of your link is going to be the same as the source. And if you're linking to something in the same directory, that's not valid. You can't have two files with the same name in the same directory. But if it's in a different directory, that's totally fine. And this is why we can specify something in another directory. So let's say touch sub one, for example, and call it abc.txt. So we have a file called abc.txt. Now we can say ln s sub one abc.txt. Now you could call it link one link let's call it link abc right now link abc points to sub1 abc.txt but what if you remove that target name and just specify the source that you want to link to hit enter and now you will see it is going to be called let's see abc yeah link abc and where where is it right right here at the top here so the, the link is going to have the same name as your target file right here. So ba basically that's how that works by default. So what, what else do we want to cover? So we, we've covered uh, broken links, um, you know, not having to specify the path of your, the, the name of your target. And you can also link to directories. So ln-s Etsy. So you, that would create a directory in this current directory called Etsy, and that points to Etsy on your file system. So you can link to a directory and you could CD to Etsy. Now you see we're in this path actually, but we have all the files that are in our Etsy directory. And that, that's about everything we wanted to cover for links for today. Remember, check the links in the description for more info.
hit the subscribe button for more useful content like this. We also have a ton of other more interesting content covering things like coding, hardware, software, servers, Raspberry Pis, 3D printing, and a whole lot more. Hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on that next video.